Um, today we're going to be working on the Cayenne and we will be replacing a faulty window regulator. Uh, window regulator probably came off of the spool and is uh, binding up, not allowing the window to go up and down. So I wasn't actually going to video this because I needed uh, I needed to get it done and it takes a lot longer to do a video than it does to uh, just go ahead and get it done. But uh, seeing that there's such a lack of information out there um, on the uh, window regulator, everybody does exactly what I'm doing here today and that is start with the door panel removed and the door panel is quite the um, obstacle sometimes to, to get off of there. I was afraid that I was pulling too hard, that I missed clips. I'm here to assure you that uh, when they say there's six bolts, that's all there is. Um, in the handle itself, you have two here. I believe that's a handle bolt. And then in the armrest, you have two here. And then on the bottom of the door panel, there are two that go up from the ground up. So what you essentially have is something that looks a lot like this. You remove this, there's just one, two, three retainer clips on it. And then the part you really have to be careful with because it looks very precarious um, in that it's connected by this little tiny piece of plastic and that is the arm, lower armrest. And that also just pries out. Now I've seen somebody, some people say that you can just pull the back side of it out, pull it out and remove the bolts. Um, I pulled all of mine out. I was just extra super careful in doing so. And that also exposed the bolts. The last but not least thing that you have to pull out is this corner trim piece that goes right up here by your mirror. Um, that's got to come out as well. The mirror itself does not, I don't believe, has to come out. Um, so that's where we're at now. We got the door panel off. Simply squeeze in these clips, pull it out, and the little barrel pops out. Um, it is fairly easy, but it's a little nerve-wracking in that the uh, panel clips are not that easy to take off. In fact, if you look right over here, um, I've got one that stayed in the door and that's where it felt like I had a retainer that was really not wanting to, uh, to cooperate. So we're going to leave that in there until we get the inner tin panel that mounts the speaker and the motor and all that out. Now the next step in doing this is going to be to take care of these rivets right here. And there are four of them across the top. And then we will see about having to remove these two rivets. Some say you have to, some say you do not have to. So I'm gonna leave them intact until I determine that I absolutely have to. And by the way, this is a 2008 uh, Cayenne, the 9PA with the facelift. It's a newer version with the 4.8. Um, it's just a Cayenne S. It's not a turbo model, um, but it is uh, it is definitely the older design 9PA. So to remove these rivets, we started to drill them out, and the rivets just started to spin. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity to go to our local Harbor Freight store and buy a little uh, belt sander, which will grind them off no problem. Uh, it's about 20 bucks at your local Harbor Freight. And if it lasts for four rivets, well, then I probably got my money worth out of it. So probably turn the uh, volume down fast forward while I'm uh, grinding these out just because it's not that interesting. But I went with a medium uh, grit belt. I believe it's a 80 grit. It comes 60, 80, and 100, I believe. I don't, I don't know. I don't have it here in front of me. So anyway, engage safety squints, and here we go.
Okay, that was about 30 minutes of uh, the compressor running, it seemed like. That uh, belt sander does use a lot of uh, <clears throat> a lot of air. So we've got the heads ground off of them. I don't have a screwdriver handy, so I'm just going to use this um, spackle tool to drive the heads the rest of the way off of them. I did one off camera while the compressor was running just to make sure we were going to be able to work. Okay, so <clears throat> those are the four. Now the other thing we're going to have to remove is the weather strip. It does indeed look like there are rivets on the side. Those were not shown in any of the videos that I watched. So, we're going to have to get the grinder back out. You can see it right there. It was behind this little plastic clip that moved up out of the way. And I'm going to move the weather strip out of the way. That might be more of a candidate for a... Uh, a drill bit because of this lip here I don't want to grind that off so stand by while I go get a drill bit that might well, this other one we're going to have to use the uh, belt sander on it, and I'll show you why. Just there's, there's no room for the camera here. There is no room for a drill, so I'll try to prop you up here somewhere. Nope, you can chisel it off. So that's good news. Now, we are back to just the uh, metal door panel. We've removed the motor, makes the door panel, should make the door panel loose. And it does not. So then we do have to remove these two rivets here. And here. All right, now we move to the side door. This is the door jam. Um, what closes against the car when the door is closed. Uh, we have to remove this piece of plastic trim because it hides the four, one of the four bolts that holds the upper frame into the vehicle. Um, don't know if you can see it from there. I'll try to bring you in closer. But there is also a pin right 
there where my finger is that the door rests in so that when you're installing it, um, you don't have to try to hold the door in position. I don't know that that's why that's there, but it allows you to uh, hold the door in position. Anyway, if you're uh, going to be prying anywhere out here, you want to use plastic tools, you can get these. They're a dime a dozen um, at any parts store checkout counter. And they just pop off. And then you want to remove this lower one as well. Same way, you gotta find one that's sharp enough. Let's see if this one. That one comes out as well. So we got those out. You're gonna find two T45 Torx bits. I'll go ahead and do this lower one first. Since we already got the camera on it, and imagine they're locked tight it on, difficult. I was correct. So we will try this without the extension taking up half of our torque. a lot better. Go up to the upper one, right in there. Also got it. Moving to the inside of the door. Rubber or plastic piece that snaps out. And then down below, down below here, you have another one of the little circles. There we go. Just as you were falling over. All right, now we're repositioned. Um, again, I don't know that we're going to get any tools in there that are of any use. Oops, sorry, I just took the upper bolt out. All right. Okay, now looking at this, we have everything set to go with the exception of this wiring harness that goes up to the mirror, comes down and around, and was one of the plugs that we had unplugged from the door module so we'll attempt to pop those out bolts do have to come out we'll spend a minute on those Number three is on the ground. And last but not least, number four might still be in there a little bit. We may have to. There we go.
And there you have it. All right, so we've moved away from the car. We have the lower door frame up on a couple of saw horses precariously here. And what I want to do is I want to remove the window from the equation because that's going to be the not going to be good if it breaks. So we're going to go ahead and remove these T25 torque screws. And then with that, you can open these retainers. Lift the window slightly up off the retainers while sliding it down. Trying to keep everything out of the way all the while. So. There we go. Gonna lean that up out of the way. And these yellow retainers, I believe just pull off there and they do. I don't believe they're left and right, but I will keep them on the side that they came from. And that leaves us with the regulator assembly. We'll just take a minute here and see what it was that has actually failed on this apparently it is this cable right here yes there's our point of failure right there old rusty cable which would normally go right in there and obviously we lost it and the spring mechanism so So this should flip over like so. And there I believe we have the proper alignment for this. All that we have to do now is drill out the four rivets retaining the old regulator, which are here, 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 and here. And it looks to be just a rivet with a washer in behind it. We should be able to make short work of those with the um, with the drill, which I left over the car. Stand by. Next step would be to find a suitable punch to knock those rivets out and all of mine are at work. So next best thing, we're gonna try a three inch drywall screw. And I believe it works like a charm. We can get one of an equivalent size to replace these rivets. That one's in a blind hole so you can't retrieve it. As is that one. So 
So there you have it. Old regulator removed. All right, stand by. We're back finally. Um, got the regulator ready to go in. Just want to do a little bit of a cleanup before we uh, go there. This little rubber strip or foam strip uh, clearly did not make it from the uh, uninstall. So I'm just going to take a scraper and do my best to remove the excess. Just by scraping across it. And then I've got some, just some regular window weather stripping that I can replace this with just to seal it up so there's no whistle going down the road or anything like that. <clears throat> it's not that critical of a step. Probably could be skipped. It's probably overkill, but hey, I had it sitting on the shelf, so why not? Next thing we want to do is go ahead and lay out the regulator um, in the proper position, which I believe is going to be. Okay, next thing you want to do is turn the door so the outside of the door is facing up and kind of lay out your new regulator. Make sure you got everything where it's supposed to be. Um, this will face the other way, face the inside because the gear will mate up with the motor which is on the inside. <clears throat> And then what I'll do is grab the four rivets that I'm going to need. These are just 3 16 steel rivets with the longer shank on them. And they'll do just fine. So kind of pre-position them so that your regulator's in place. And then, last but not least. Okay, so that's going to be the final position of the window regulator. I believe this rubber strip just keeps the two cables from uh, rubbing against one another. Okay, welcome back. <clears throat> Got our window installed in the frame. And now we are going to take this, I temporarily reinstalled this so I could uh, drive it because uh, I knew I wasn't going to finish the project last weekend. And yeah, it's very annoying to drive it uh, with plastic for the window, but here we go. I've got two of these. Uh, let that hang. Um, the next thing we need to do figure out how we're going to remove these two rivets that were uh, reverse installed. We had to um, drill the backs of them out to pull it through. So we'll take a look at that next. After we get that done, actually, no, we'll put the window in next because. All right, we're, we're back. We had a little technical error there. Um, don't know what happened, but 
I was sliding the window frame in, looked over at the camera, realized that the uh, camera was not recording. So I'll just take you through a, a quick review of what has to happen. Um, the unit that you saw over there on the sawhorses is this upper portion here with the glass contained in it. Um, you saw me remove the panel just now. Simply, that upper part just slides down into the door right here. And when it gets into proper position, there are these little tabs. If I can show you. And they are right here that catch a little pin and hold the window in place. Now there's one on either side that you need to line up. I don't know if I can even see this one or not, but trust me, it is there. It's up in there. You can see it um, it's right here when you're installing the window um, because you can look in through the uh, through the side here. And once that upper carrier is resting in those pins, it's in the proper position. And all that you may need to do is rock the bottom back or forth to get the secret bolts installed, which are these torque spits, that's horrible camera work, that are in here and then straight down in here as well. Um, I'm gonna start mine by hand, obviously, for obvious reasons. Um, and then I'm gonna try to center the door and make sure everything looks good before I uh, begin to tighten them down. So I, I don't know how good this video uh, will be but we'll give it a shot. I'm going to put you up in the carrier and we'll be right back. Okay. Got you in the carrier. Got the door open as wide as I can get it. And I will be going through right here can't even tell if you can see that. Yeah, right here with the uh, the bolt. And, and that's what you don't want to do. All right, here we go again. movement available to us. I'm going to go ahead and get the top ones tightened down close. We'll be out here for that. Okay. And for the last couple, we are going to definitely have to use a uh, Freeze wrench. And then last but not least. All right, so we have to figure out our door lock assembly here. How do we want to address that? Stick with idea number one. Rivet. 
minimal damage to the plastic, which is good. And we'll try for number two. All right, sometimes you gotta know when you're when you're beat and uh, me continuing to film trying to hook the regulator transmission up to this motor was not doing anybody any good so uh, had to do it off camera um, what I ended up doing is the three little white pieces on the transmission actually stick through the metal plate and have clips on them which should make putting this on a lot easier but getting them to line up and pull through is what I was having trouble with because um, you can go back in the video and look but the transmission cables run on the outside of the crossbar that runs down through here they're on the other side of it so in order to get them out far enough to start them into this metal panel one of the cables is interfering um, so what i had to do and you really can't get anything behind the door panel because you have no room to move so what i had to do was put the panel on with two screws like we did um when we paused the progress and I used this drywall screw, not really to thread into the plastic, but to grab the plastic because it's sharp on the sharp on the edges. And I used two of them, and I got two of the uh, two of the white uh, pieces pulled through. Two of the white pieces pulled through, and uh, from there was able to snap them into place. Was able to use some angled pliers to kind of pry them. The rest of the way through and even then one of the white posts the holding tabs were broken on it so i just figured that if i could somehow um, get the uh the other two started which were these two bottom ones i would be able to thread the third one in and uh i was able to do so so there you go all right so now that the uh motors on you can go ahead and put your connectors back in they should just snap into place and this one not sure where that one went that one will snap there this one probably goes into the door panel or some sort of light um because we are out of connectors down here that it would reach and it appears that it wants to plug in that way so we've got that all done we'll pull our uh, little rubber grommet through here get it seated try to get it seated <laughs> almost impossible to do with one hand so anyway that's the uh that's the motor install I'm going to put the uh camera down for a few minutes and then we're going to rivet this uh, lock cylinder in right over here stand by all right inner panels back on motors back on we've got our two wire connectors connected um, now we have to replace the rivets across the top that we had to cut out This is one of the reasons that I did replace that foam because if you had a little bit of looseness here, um, I'm sure the vibration would be deafening. So not only does it insulate, it also uh, keeps the noise down. There we go.
And now we are done with tightening the inner panel. Um, the regulator is hooked to the motor, so I don't have any fear of this going down, but I'm sure there is some sort of reset that I'm going to be doing on the window itself. And uh, when I do that, I'll maybe uh, film a separate video because this one is going to be way too long and have to be cut way down. So I'm going to end this one here. Um, I know it wasn't the prettiest video that you've ever seen, but uh, got the job done. Got the job done. I hope it was a little more thorough than some of the other window regulator videos out there. Hope it gave you some information. Um, Feel free to uh, like and subscribe if you're interested in some of the stuff I'm doing on both the Boxster um, builds and the um, and the Cayenne and some other various things that come along when the opportunity presents itself. In other words, when somebody I know needs something done. <laughs> so uh, with that, I'll leave you. And I appreciate you watching, and please. Uh, Drop a comment below. I like to hear from you, good or bad. I know this isn't uh, the greatest video ever produced, so you know you're you're not breaking any new ground if you want to tell me that. But uh, feel free to drop a comment. So that's uh, and with that, I'm going to end the video. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Little bonus footage. I forgot to rub it in the. Uh, door lock. I don't know if I'll be able to do this with one hand. So it appears it did work to run the rivets in the opposite way that they were in before, which is good news. Little tip, you don't have to remove the entire door latch assembly um, to get this panel out only to have to drill these out from behind. You can just drill off the ends of them, get the panel out and put the rivets in the reverse way. So there you have it. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it.